In today's video, we're taking one of the classic King of Random projects, the Backyard Metal Foundry, and giving it a new upgrade. Guys, one of the biggest, most famous projects that Grant ever created for this channel was the Backyard Metal Foundry. He searched far and wide to figure out how we could make a foundry that we could build ourselves and could actually melt some metal down. What he came up with was a metal bucket with various types of heat insulation and reinforcement on the inside. Over the years, there's been several iterations and our most recent one that had the fire bricks and the little bit of the KO wool up at the top finally met its end after, oh man, how many times did we use that? A lot, that thing was around for a while. It was, and so it is time to honor the original design and add in all of the upgrades we've been able to come up with. Grant was always thrilled to see how his design could be taken to the next level. So that's what we're trying to do today. We're still using the steel bucket. We're still gonna be using the bricks and the k wool, but we are adding on to it. We're gonna see if we can make one level better than we've ever made before. So we've got our six gallon steel bucket and this is just from Home Depot. Comes with the lid and of course we're gonna be modifying the lid as well. But pretty much every part of this process is very messy. So we're gonna head outside with it and start making that mess. <laughs> All right, as one of the primary sources of insulation, we are going to be using these fire bricks again. If you're trying to find these, I recommend searching for insulated fire brick. As bricks go, they're fairly lightweight, so the lack of density is actually a lot of what gives it its insulation. You know, air doesn't travel through it well, and uh, it doesn't conduct heat right through the solid parts of the material. We found that worked really well, I thought. It does. The problem is, is it's a little too thick. It is. We wouldn't really be able to fit any of those in there and then still have space for anything. So we get to do a lot of cutting. We're going to cut these bricks into thirds, and then we're going to shape them a little bit to make them fit nicely into our bucket. So we've got our fire brick for the bottom. Like last time, what we're going to do, we're going to take one of these fire bricks. We're going to cut it in half. That's going to go down at the bottom of here. And then we're going to cut some more bricks into thirds. And those are going to be what will line the sides. If you're doing this, it will probably dull your saw blade quite a bit. I went and got a cheap saw. This was like six bucks. And I don't think it'll be good for much other than cutting fire brick by the time I'm done. <laughs> Even. Start shaping them. Yeah. All right, I got marked off approximately where the edges of the bucket are. This is the outside, of course, so I am going to take it in about that far. That should be the bottom. All right, let's check this is fitting. Oh, yeah. That fits. As you can see, there is a little bit of a gap. Uh, and part of that is just because of the dimensions of bricks versus the dimensions of the bucket. Part of it is because the bucket is tapered and so it's really close to the walls at the bottom, but even just one inch up, the gap grows a little bit. And so we're gonna use some KO wool and we have some refractory cement and we're going to use some of this as well to, to line pretty much everything. This is gonna be used to hold bricks in place and to cover up the edges of the KO wool in the bucket, which should make it last longer and be safer in general. Now, as these are right now, if I recall correctly, we can't quite fit them all. Maybe we actually can. This one's looking a bit bigger. This, this bucket might not be quite the same size as the last one, and so if actually, we can... Actually, we yeah. might need them. No, no, we got them all. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is nice. Yeah, this bucket is just a pinch wider than the one we used for our last one, so I don't think we're gonna have to cut down the sides of the bricks like I did, which is gonna be good, because that way these can even rest sideways a little bit, and we'll have a lot more access to getting whatever it is we're heating up yeah, down within. Room. I think what we're gonna want is, yeah, cable sort of like triangle slivers mm -hmm. and then just Very a strip around, around the, top. the top. But also in this section, I'm thinking back behind it, just like if we can slice it in half like we did with the bricks. It peels, yeah. Yes, yeah, so let's peel it in half and do some very thin pieces. So we'll adhere some pieces of cable onto the back, place the bricks, and then we'll put triangular pieces in between every single one so that that way it's double insulated with the K-Wool, and then we've got the bricks closest to the flame. K-Wool is ceramic, not glass. So while you don't want to breathe it, touching it's not gonna do anything to you. All right, I've made sort of a wedge with a slight distal taper going down, and I think this will fit pretty nicely in between the bricks, so I just gotta make five more of these. 
Uh, I think this way it'll just kind of... Oh, fantastic, yeah. Right in between, filling gaps pretty nicely. So yeah, I think I'll just try and make five of those. Now this cement, from what I understand, is pretty special because it is a little bit different than regular cement. It's actually much denser and much better for heat. So we're scaling this down just a little bit. This is a 55 pound bag. It would need five pounds of water technically, but we don't need that much. So what we're gonna do is we're actually scaling it down to about 11 pounds. We'll see how much that makes. We should be good with that. Aha! Five and a half pounds. All right, so now I'm gonna toss some gloves on. So that's technically all the water we're using. We have added more water than the instructions call for. We're a little concerned about how much this is going to shrink as it dries. I think it's gonna be okay. We are doing things a little bit differently than what this might actually normally be used for. So we're gonna let this dry for several days before we try and heat this up. Patching a couple little gaps in here. I think we're ready to start adding it on. Nice. So I'll just start at the bottom and work our way up going for maybe a half inch thick layer, maybe a little less even. I think less, especially with the amount that we've got here. True. Definitely meant for cutting thicker pieces of metal. Oh my gosh, fantastic. Oh yeah. That's yeah. gonna be The perfect. kale wool is resting like right on the cement. So that should be giving us a pretty good seal. So just these are our gaps. That's where the air comes out. Perfectly controlled. And then as before, our screws also work as little feet to keep it up off the ground a little bit. Yeah, and we wanna make sure it's good and cured and then we have to do a slow heat. So you may have noticed there aren't holes drilled into the foundry yet. We've made sure we know just where the bricks are. So we are gonna drill those same holes using our same hole saw. We're gonna wait until this is cured so we can cut through the metal and then the brick and then the concrete all kind of at once. That'll be our feed and that'll just be when the concrete is dry and after we do that, we'll hook the propane up. We might just only turn one burner on and just slowly get that heating until we can hopefully get this to cure nice and evenly. Like a lot of water will cure and evaporate, but chemically there will still be water inside until we heat it up to that higher temperature, but we have to get there slowly so it doesn't crack. So now it's time to just wait for a bit and we'll come back later, finish it up. It's been several days and our, uh, our cement is nice and dry, just as we were hoping. We think that all of the water has escaped from it, at least from a traditional level. However, we do, of course, need to add heat to really blast it out of there at a chemical level. So it's basically like firing clay, it's just cement. We're basically just driving the water out of it. Right now, however, there's nowhere to put our gas jets in. We need to add <laughs> holes. So we've got our hole saw. We're gonna use this, we're gonna try and very carefully cut through. Hopefully it goes well without causing destruction. This is basically every different style that you and Grant have tried, but we've combined them all into what we hope is like a super foundry. So this should be the brick that we're trying to get through. Right about there is gonna be the center. Now I am actually going to move over just a little bit because I'm gonna angle this and try and go in not quite 90 degrees perpendicular to the bucket, but just a little bit angled because we like to have the jets angled as they're going into the bucket. All right, got our pilot hole started. There we go. I'd say our aim is doing pretty good. It looks like we're quite well lined up with the middle of the brick. I think we are through the brick now and uh, onto the cement. I think the brick is thick enough that it's stopping our drill from pushing all the way through. So I'm gonna try and get a screwdriver or a chisel to break out some of the brick that I've drilled at least partially through to see if I can get a little more clearance. Well, this stuff 
This is a lot harder than I was expecting to get through. I'll keep going, see if I get anywhere. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to start drilling the hole in the other side because it's possible that what I'm doing now is going to ruin my bit and I want to make sure I can at least get through the metal on the other side while the bit still has some cut to it. Well, I was uh, concerned about whether or not I would still be able to get through this metal and I was right to be concerned. I have basically wrecked this hole saw for cutting through metal at this point by trying to cut through cement. So it's taken me like five times as long to do not even the entire job of cutting through the metal on this side. So I may have to make a quick stop at the hardware store to buy a new one of these. I think I can still get through this with this, but to get through the rest of that cement, I'm going to have to figure out what tool to use. They may have something specifically designed for that at the hardware store, and that's what I'm gonna check out. We've gone and got ourselves a new hole saw. This one, although it doesn't look or feel very sharp, actually has diamond in it. So it's designed for cutting through masonry. Should be able to get through our cement without too much trouble. Let's give it a shot. That is fantastic. Man, right tool nice for the job. Aim. Right tool for the job. There you Don't go. Don't use a metal saw to cut through cement. <laughs> it's just not gonna do it. All right, so now we've got the holes in it. It's time to heat this up. Yes. Awesome. Let's get all our gas hooked up, and I'm thinking we're gonna start with the lid off, only one burner open. Okay. So it's just barely going minimum heat. We'll let that run for 10, 15 minutes till it gets up to a good heat, then maybe put the lid on. Slowly turn the heat up, open the second burn, just slowly bring this heat up to get this to its cure temperature. Okay, this has been running for about two hours, gradually increasing the heat, and we have a nice orange glow it on looks pretty much the entire inside right now, which is just what we're hoping for. Fantastic. So yep. I think it's time we can kill the gas. Take a look at it. Oh, oh, look at that. that is, wow, okay, the radiating heat. <laughs> as soon as that, <laughs> like we've had warm foundries, like our foundries are always very warm when you take the lids off, but this like, it was kind of chilly and then all of a sudden that came off and the whole thing is warm. That is amazing. At this point, this is finished. So we have our new updated foundry. I think Grant would be proud of this one. I think so. We do want to just add a little note some of the videos that we're going to be putting out next actually happened before we lost Grant. We had them fully recorded and even edited. If you see anything strange about timelines and stuff, this video was probably shot after some of those, and we are going to be continuing to produce videos and putting them out fairly regularly. King of Random continues. It's what everyone wanted, and so that's what's gonna keep happening. Thanks, guys. Guys, that's it for today, but you know we've always got more for you to see. Hit that box up at the top to check out our most recent video, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.